Good morning, everybody. It's time to check in with the state of college football and some of the interesting prospects. So, obviously, after an effort like we put on the field in week one, this stuff might even be more important than we were thinking. This stuff might matter even more than we initially thought. We might be very quickly here thinking about this stuff more than we're actually thinking about our own football team. So it's important that we cover this stuff um, well and cover it appropriately. So here we go. I got a list of guys who I thought stood out in a positive way on um, Saturday and I think in a couple cases Friday. And um, yeah, just, just some guys to kind of start getting amped up on going as we move towards the draft. And I know it's a long way away, but it's good to start getting an idea of who's standing out. So let's dive in starting with quarterbacks. So five guys that stood out for me positively from last week. We got Shader Sanders again. I mean, he's just the biggest story in college football right now. So it's hard to stay away from him. The Colorado guy, 31 of 42 for 393 yards, two touchdowns, had one rushing touchdown. Colorado was playing backups in the end of that game. It was a blowout. Now they were playing Nebraska. Nebraska is probably no good this year, but it's still a good game. It's still a really good game. And he's put up monster numbers two games in a row. His only issue, as I see it from looking at these games, holding onto the ball. He holds onto the ball too long, takes a lot of sacks, but he's got the arm. He's got the accuracy. He can read defenses. Um, I do think that despite holding onto the ball too long, he does have pretty good pocket presence. So that can get better. But Shader Sanders, definitely one of the stars of college football right now. And when you take away guys like Caleb Williams, who is just completely off our list anyway and should be, like we shouldn't even be thinking about Caleb right now. He's way too good. Shader Sanders might be the most intriguing guy. Like it has become apparent that quickly because of how dominant he has been. Next quarterback is Tyler Van Dyke of the Hurricanes. He had an awesome game. They upset Texas A&M. Texas A&M was favored in that game, and Miami took it to him with 48 points. Van Dyke, 21 of 30 for 374 yards and five touchdowns. Now, A&M just might not be any good. That's fine. I understand that. A&M probably isn't any good, but Miami was expected to lose, and instead they showed up and dominated. So Miami, they're in good hands with Tyler Van Dyke, it looks like, and maybe he's going to have an, a better season than I was expecting. Because I like Tyler Van Dyke, but I also was aware of the fact that Cristobal's system might make him look not so good. But that was not the case this week. Um, the next guy, and this guy might be the... Uh, I may have moved the needle in the positive direction more on this guy than anyone else. Quinn Ewers. He goes into Alabama. He goes in to Alabama. 24-38 for 3-49 three touchdowns. Two of them were deep shots. Two of them, he shows off the arm strength. Three carries for 11 yards. Also caught a pass for three yards for whatever that's worth. Looked great. No turnovers. No real mistakes. Leads UT to a upset over Alabama. Texas might actually be back. And I've said it before, Quinn Ewers, pedigree's great. But the production, we need to see it. We're seeing it right now. Quinn Ewers was great against a team. I don't know if Alabama is going to be elite this year, but that's a good team. That's a good defense. You did something in that game. You accomplished something big. They've got some good players over there, and you did it all over them. Cam Ward. Great game for Cam Ward as well. Uh, to, to, uh, now, the stats are not overpowering. 20 for 32, 212 yards, two touchdowns, 17 carries for 43 yards. But... The Cougars won against the Badgers. Now, it was at home, I understand that, but it was an upset. He played against a good Badgers defense this week and came out with the win and came out with a solid, effective performance. It wasn't amazing, but he did his job. He showcased some really positive things. He's showing that he's growing as a player, and I'm starting to get pretty amped up on the possibility of getting Cam Ward in a later round. Although, if he keeps playing this, like this, he may not go in a later round. He might go in an earlier round. But Cam Ward played great. Bo Nix would be the last guy I want to throw in here. Oregon, of course. 32 of 44 for 359 yards, two touchdowns, nine carries for 46 yards. So he showcased the arm and the legs. Comeback win over Texas Tech. Had to lead the team down the field for a game-winning score. 
Um, not an easy game. I know Texas Tech doesn't exactly have a great defense, but that game was in Texas Tech. It was not easy to get the job done. Bo Nix did. Bo Nix, great, great performance. There were other quarterbacks that played well last week, of course. I could have put Penix up here again, but Penix's numbers were a little bit down because receivers were dropping balls, but um, suffice to say that he definitely could have gone here as well. Of course, he's playing Tulsa, and I'm trying to find players that are at least playing against real competition as much as I can. So Penix will definitely be appearing here several times this year, but um, against Tulsa, I decided, yeah, he can uh, sit on the sideline for a little bit. But uh, great stuff from these quarterbacks for the most part. Uh, there were a couple of duds this week, but overall, you got to say this quarterback class is looking primo. Got to come away with one. Uh, not a lot of positive stuff for the tight ends, I don't think, in this last week. Jatavion Sanders of Texas was the only guy who stood out to me. Five catches for 114 yards and helped his team upset Alabama in Alabama. So Jatavion Sanders continues to kind of establish himself, himself as the best non-Brock Bowers tight end in this upcoming class. Other than that, it was quiet. Benjamin Euro second, another pretty good game, but Stanford got murdered. Four catches for 54 yards, so he's starting to bump himself up a bit. I will say that. And then the only other thing I could find were the uh, two uh, Iowa tight ends. Eric All and Luke Lockie, they both had three catches. Three for 32 for All, three for 58 for Lockie. So they did all right, but I struggle to find standout tight ends from this week in college football that are legitimate pro prospects. I don't want to do something like John Westover, right? Like... Westover is a cool college player, but I don't believe he's a pro prospect, so I'm not talking about him here. Uh, interior offensive lineman, uh, JV on Cohen, I'm going to shout him out again because the Miami Hurricanes offense dominated a credible college team in Texas A&M. There were two sacks on Van Dyke and 48 points scored, and I don't think either of those sacks were on Cohen, so Cohen continues to play really well to start this season. He's one of my favorite guys in next year's draft if we're trying to improve this interior OL. Uh, next up would be Christian Mahogany of Boston College. Boston College didn't play a very good team this week, but they played very well. Uh, zero sacks on the quarterback, Castellanatos. 202 rushing yards by the Boston College unit as a team. 4.5 yards per carry, so pretty good performance there. And 31 points scored. Not amazing, but Christian Mahogany continues to lead a very effective Boston College offensive line. He's... One of my favorite guys in this upcoming draft. Not as much as Cohen, not as much as some of these other guys, but Mahogany's nice. Uh, Zach Frazier of West Virginia allowed one sack on the offensive on the entire offensive line, by the way. Not on Zach Frazier, but uh, WVU quarterbacks got sacked once, and they ran the ball for 304 yards. Again, not real competition. They were playing. But 304 yards against anybody is good. Look at what Washington did. We didn't. Did we even run the ball for 100 against Tulsa? I don't think so. So 304 yards against anybody is a big deal. 6.2 yards per carry, dominant. 56 points scored by that offense, by the way. Absolute, absolute dominance. Uh, next guy would be Ladarius Henderson of the University of Michigan. Uh, no sacks on quarterbacks for the Michigan uh, Wolverines, uh, McCarthy and his backup. Uh, 179 rushing yards, 5.4 yards per carry, and 35 points. Nice performance by that Michigan offense. And once again, we have Graham Barton of the University of Duke. Duke had another really good game running the ball. 261 yards, 5.8 yards per carry. No sacks allowed. So Graham Barton's now made this list twice. So he's definitely becoming somebody to keep an eye on. Duke was uh, great again. And if Duke keeps this up, they're going to have quite a few players get some draft buzz. Uh, now we move on to the defense. It was a little bit better this week on the defensive line, I'll say that. Jerzan Newton, he's a guy that a lot of Seahawks fans are already kind of circling around a little bit here. Illinois, he had a breakout game after being very quiet last week. The problem is Illinois' defense is not really good this year. They uh, lost guys like Witherspoon. They lost guys like Sidney Brown. They lost a bunch of stuff in that secondary and they're suffering for it. Jerzan Newton might be their only good player. He had six tackles and two sacks, but Illinois still got destroyed. So I don't know how you feel about it, but Newton's a good player. Uh, Tyleek Williams makes the list again. He's one of these big, uh, bulky nose tackles, um, but he still puts up numbers. Two games in a row now, he's had like five tackles. So in this game, five tackles, including one for a loss, 99 rushing yards allowed by the OSU defense, which was three yards a carry, 
only 234 total yards allowed and 7 points. I think through two games, OSU's allowed 10 points. I know they're not playing good teams, but still really, really good performance by this defense. So Tyleek Williams is one of the guys who's leading the way there. Next up, Michigan, we got Chris Jenkins, uh, five tackles, half a sack, uh, 61 rushing yards allowed by the Michigan front, two yards per carry, only 229 yards and seven points allowed. So Michigan's defense is dominant this year too. And in this game, Chris Jenkins actually showed some playmaking ability. Uh, Deontay Corlone was good for Cincinnati, the Bearcats. Um, Cincinnati's not going to be a great team this year, but Dante Corleone does kind of stand out as one of their top guys. Three tackles and a sack, 83 rushing yards allowed the whole game, less than three yards a carry, 262 yards allowed. And the final guy I'm going to shout out here is Tavondre Sweat. He didn't have a monster game, but his defense showed up. He got a sack, which is kind of rare. Tavondre Sweat is a big nose tackle type. He doesn't get a lot of sacks, but he showed up against an Alabama team that is still pretty good. They only allowed 107 rushing yards, 3.1 yards per carry, and he made a play in the backfield on the quarterback. So Tavondre Sweat, somebody who's definitely impressing me as this uh, college football season starts. All right, so now we move on to linebacker here. Here are some standouts. We got Tommy Eichenberg of the Ohio State Buckeyes. And um, he was part of that really strong, stout defensive performance by the um, Buckeyes. Again, he had six tackles and a sack. Uh, he was part of that 99 rushing yards allowed, 234 yards, seven points. So Tommy Eichenberg may push himself into the first round if he continues to keep it up. He's had two pretty good games in a row. If once Ohio State plays better teams, he'll have the chance to prove himself even more so. Cedric Gray of the Tar Heels. Probably had one of the best individual performances in the country at linebacker. 11 tackles, including one for a loss. The problem is UNC's defense kind of got gutted. And that may just be a recurring theme this year where they don't have enough on that defense other than Cedric Gray. But Cedric Gray is going to get the opportunity to show his value on a defense that is going to probably have issues this year based on what we, what we've seen so far. But Cedric Gray played good, also playing really good is Danny Stutzman, the Oklahoma guy. And Oklahoma's defense played well. Now they're not playing a very good team. But Danny Stutzman stood out 17 tackles. Two and a half for loss, including a sack. 117 rushing yards allowed. 3.4 yards per carry. So run defense was good. 11 points. So Danny Stutzman is having a very positive impact on a defense that is probably not going to be one of the best in the country this year. So good stuff from Danny Stutzman. Final guy is Jalen Ford, Texas guy. He's new to this list, but um, he had a good game. Five tackles, including one for a loss, and was part of a run defense that only allowed 107 rushing yards. So Jalen Ford, start putting him on your radars, guys. And finally, we're going to look at safety here. We got better play from safeties this week, I think. Cooper DeJean had a nice game for Iowa. Ten tackles, including a half a tackle for a loss. A pass deflection, 290 yards allowed by the defense by Iowa and only 13 points. So the defense played well. He played well. He was all over the place. You watch the game. You can see the all-around ability that makes Cooper DeJean likely a first-round pick this year. Cameron Kinchins of Miami. He played really well. Seven tackles and a pick. And James Williams, the other Miami safety, also was all over the place. Nine tackles. Now, Miami's defense did get kind of mowed up and down the field a little bit. A&M did put up 33. But these are the better guys that Miami has because so far it seems like Leonard Taylor hasn't shown up to the start of this season. Like Leonard Taylor is not having a big impact on games to my eyes right now. So they're getting what they can out of their safeties. They're doing what they can. Last guy is Jalen Catalan of Texas, another Texas guy who's new to this list. And I don't know why I put Tex up here and then UT everywhere else. Let me fix that. Sorry. OCD. Uh, seven tackles and one tackle for loss for Texas in an impressive showing against the Alabama Crimson Tide. All right, so that's my look at the college football prospects that played well this week. Let me know what you guys think. Did I miss anybody? Am I forgetting anybody? Do I have any oversights here that you think are glaring? Let me know down below. I will see you guys later on today. Go Hawks, and I hope you're enjoying this college football so season so far.